In this video, we will continue building the backend of our Reddit clone application by creating the API to create and then read the comments on our posts. Before starting the video, if you want to check out the written version of this tutorial, you can go to the first link in the description section where you can also find the source code for this project. So as I mentioned before, we are going to create the API to manage comments in our application. Before starting the code, let's go ahead and see what all the endpoints we are going to create in this video. So I opened the link for the written tutorial here. And if you go to the section implement API for managing comments, you can see a table where we have our required mappings along with the HTTP method and the name of the method we are going to implement inside our controller. So the first one is an endpoint to create comments in our application that would be a post mapping and uh, the path is slash API slash comments. The next one is the mapping to retrieve comments for a particular post. Here we have a get mapping and we are passing the post ID as a URI path variable. And similarly, we have our last mapping to retrieve comments for a particular user, which also takes the username as the URI path variable. So now let's go ahead and start coding. Inside the controller package, I am going to create a class called as comments controller .java. And, uh, and the first thing we are going to do is to annotate this class with the usual rest controller annotation. And after that, the request mapping annotation and the value here would be api slash api slash comments lastly let's add also the lombok annotation allox constructor now let's create our first method create comments and annotate it with the post mapping annotation as this is handles uh, as this is going to handle the post request uh, this also contains a request body so let's add the request body annotation and now we have to create a dto class called as comments dto which represents the structure of the request body. So inside this comments DTO, I'm going to quickly copy the necessary fields and paste them. And also the annotations we are going to use. So we have the fields ID, post ID, created date, text, and username. And here the text would be the actual comment posted by the user. Now let's go back to our comments controller class. And here we have our request body. Now we have to convert this object into our comment entity and save it to the database. As usual, we are going to handle these uh, logic inside our service class. So let's create a comment service class inside the service package and add the needed annotations. I'm going to create a method called as save, which takes comments DTO object as input. Now we have to map the data inside comments DTO to our comment entity. So if I open the comment entity class, you can see that we have the fields ID, text, post, created date and user. And we have the fields text inside our DTO as we saw before and the field created date will be generated uh, dynamically. And all we need is a post and user to construct the comment object. Now, if you open the comments DTO, you can see we have already the post ID and username fields. So we just have to query the post repository and user repository interfaces to retrieve the corresponding user and post objects. So here I'm going to show a small tip. If you're using IntelliJ, if you want to see multiple editors at once, we have this very good option to split the screen vertically and also horizontally. So that if I want to compare the fields, I just can right click on the editor name here and select split vertically. Now you can see more than two editors at once. This will come in handy when you are dealing with uh, projects which have lots of lots of files. And also another tip is if you want to switch between windows, you can use control tab, this is a key combination. This opens up a switcher window and there you can see the file history, you have your file history. And then you can navigate through that by pressing tab while holding the control key. So this is the shortcut I use every time to navigate between the files. Uh, in the history. Okay, now back to our comment service class and uh, let's inject the post repository and user repository into our comment service. And inside the save method, I'm going to query the post repository by using the find by ID method and by passing in the post ID. So as this returns an optional, if the post is not available, we can call the or else throw block. Uh, and uh, inside that we will pass in a supplier to throw a post not found exception. Next thing is we have to determine the author of the comment. So for that, instead of using the username, we can check who is the currently logged in user 
and use that object to create our comment object. For that, I need to also inject all service class into our comment service. Now we have all the necessary information. All we need is a mapper which can map our comments DDO to comment objects. So let's quickly create an interface called as comment mapper, which is inside the mapper package. Okay, so I've already prepared all the method definitions and mappings inside this comment mapper interface. The first mapping we have is for the map method, which takes in the comments DTO and the post and the user and returns the comment. So the first so the first mapping is for the field ID. So we are ignoring this uh, ID field because the ID will be auto generated whenever we save the object to the database. So there is no need to specifically mention the mappings here. That's why I've used ignore equal to true value inside the annotation. The next one is for the field text. Here we are taking the text value from the comments DTO um, object and mapping it to the text value text field of a comment object. And the next mapping is for the created date field. Here we are evaluating an expression, a Java expression. And I'm passing the Java dot time dot instant dot now uh, expression to the Java um, to the expression uh, field. Abstract will evaluate the instant dot now uh, expression and uh, will take the written statement and map it to the created date uh, field. So you may ask me why did I mention Java dot time dot instant instead of just writing instant? Because whenever map struct creates the implementation class for this interface, it will not add the import statement to the class because we did not mention how to so there is no explicit so there is no way to add the import statement to the implementation class so that's why if we provide the fully qualified class name then map then there is no need to add import statements specifically so these are the mappings we are providing explicitly next up is uh, the method map to dto here this is a straightforward we have just a comment object coming in as an input argument and uh, we are constructing and returning the comments DTO object here. And the first mapping is for post ID. Here also we are going to use uh, the expression um, field and we are going to pass in the Java expression comment dot get post dot get post ID because we have the post ID inside the post object. And uh, similarly, we are going to map the username to the comments DTO object by using the expression comment dot get user dot get username. Now let's go back to our service class and inject this mapper. Inside the save method I am going to type comment mapper inside the save method I am going to type comment mapper dot map and pass in the comments DTO post and uh, for the user object I am going to make a method call to auth service auth services uh, get current user method which returns us the currently logged in user. So now let's store the written type of this into a variable and to save the object, we need a comment repository. So let's inject that quickly and uh, save the object to the database. Okay, we are done with the save logic. Now we have to also implement the functionality uh, to send a notification email to the author of the post. So that means whenever a user submits a comment on the post, we will send a notification email to the creator of the post. If you remember, we have already built the mail sending functionality previously. And uh, so we can just reuse those code. And uh, so we can just reuse that code. So I'm going to go ahead and inject the required components into a service and paste in the required code. And we will have a look at it. What's going, what's it, and we will have, and we will reuse it and see what it is doing. So you can see we are first building the body of our email by using the mail content builder. Once we get our email message, we can send the email by using the mail service dot send mail method. And inside this method, we are passing the notification email object where we pass the subject line of our email followed by the email address of the post author and uh, followed by the email message. So once we execute this one, we are already sending the email message asynchronously to the user. We have completed the implementation part inside the service. Now, now let's go to the controller and inject comment service and call the save method.
Now we have to send the response back to the client that the comment is created. We can do that by returning a response entity which takes the HTTP status object as the constructor argument. As we are creating a resource in the REST world, we will send back the response as status 201 or created. So we have an enum value called as created inside HTTP status enum. So we will re return that value. So we will use that value inside the constructor argument of response entity. Let's create the implementations for our two get mappings. The first one is the get all comments for post method, which takes in a path variable of type long with name post ID. Inside this method, we are calling another method inside the comment service with same name get all comments for post. And we are returning the response back to the client by adding the return type of this method call to the response body. And finally, we are sending the HTTP status as OK for this REST call. Now let's create this method inside the comment service and inside the method, we have to first query the post repository to find the post by ID. And as this method returns an optional, we can use the or else throw method truth to throw a post not found exception. If we do find a post, then we store it in a variable and we will find all the necessary comments which are associated with this post by using the find by post method. As this method returns a list of comments, we use the stream and map functions in the Java 8 to map the comment object to comment DTO object by using the map to DTO method from the comment mapper interface. Finally, we are collecting the result back to a list and we will return it back to the controller. Now let's create our last method get all comments for user, which also takes in the path variable of type string and with variable name as username. We are calling the get all comments for user method inside comment service. And if you go inside that method, we are first querying the user from the database and then querying all the comments by the user using find by user method inside the comment repository. The resulting list of comments we are streaming and then mapping them to comments DTO objects and returning the list of comments DTOs object back to the controller. We are also returning back the response entity to the client similarly to our previous method by adding the return value from the service to the body and the, and the HTTP status as OK. All right, we have completed the implementation of the API to create and read comments. Let's test our implementation now by first starting up the server and opening the Postman client. So that is it with this video. I hope these videos are helpful to you. Please don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this. I will see you in the next video and until then, happy coding techies.